you know, I don't know if anybody here has actually skydived before, but it gets eerily quiet. There's no ambient noise up there, so uh, I was just I just made the comment that it was you know it was really quiet, and then uh, and did he respond to that? He did respond. And then after uh, he responded to that, I just was making another, you know, small talk and just said that, uh, you know, I was asking him what his longest cl uh, glide was before, you know, just general skydiving questions, and he was unresponsive. You know, I didn't have control of the parachute, so I had to reach up and, I, I guess, TV, you know, you, you know what the, the, the toggles are for on the parachute, so I just grabbed the right toggle, tried for the left toggle, uh, and in doing so, lost the right one, so I regained the right one and just held on to it. And, uh, my path was such that I was going into, towards a house, uh, so I just pulled on the toggle and turned right, and then uh, was going for some trees, so I turned right again. It's fight or flight at that point, you know, and I, we're, I guess the Army teaches you just to deal with adversity the best you can. It doesn't matter if it's on a battlefield or if it's at home or if you're 5,500 feet in the air. You know, you do what you gotta do and you just, you know, I didn't wanna die. You know, and I knew I needed to get to the ground to try and help him. I didn't know how serious it was at that point. I just know he wasn't responsive. Um, you know, and I didn't know until later on once I hit the ground that in fact he had, you know, deceased. You can't let freak accidents steer you away from doing things like that. I just had always wanted to go, but my family has uh, pretty much told me that's a no-go. So I'm going to keep my feet on the ground.